Hi there, welcome back to Vegetables Love Flowers online virtual book study. This week we're diving into chapter four, which is all about warm season tender annuals. Uh, but before we kind of dig deep into there, I want to just say that this book is broken into four sections and we've now just begun section two. And in this section are two chapters. One chapter is on warm season tender annuals, and the next chapter is ten. Um, the next chapter is cool season hardy annuals. So before we dive in today, I want to just read to you from page I believe it is page fifty-seven. And but first, look at this beautiful bouquet. This is a bouquet that I think of as spring meeting summer. If you look at that bouquet photo, the cool season hardy annuals are still blooming. So this is like perhaps an early June, mid-June photo. So the cool season spring blooming stuff is still coming on, but summer has started. We know summer has started because there's sunflowers, zinnias, and a big old green coxcomb. But yet, the beauties of spring are still blooming. The dill and the, the white flat flower, which is Ami Magus. So, um, that's just such a favorite. So, I want to read to you this because this is really the whole cusp of annual flowers. The annual plant leads a brief but miraculous life. It all starts with a little seed. The seed sprouts and grows quickly. Before you know it, flower buds are coming along and blooming begins. As soon as the flowers begin to fade, the plant takes on its real mission in life, making seed for the next generation of plants. But, this is the but that so many people miss, if the flowers are cut in their prime and don't get a chance to fade, guess what? They won't make seed. And so the annual plant must keep on making new flowers. No other garden plant has that annual's ability to keep putting out new blooms for as long as we keep harvesting them. What wonderful news for gardeners. And there it is in a nutshell, y'all. The more we cut, the more they come. You stop cutting, they stop coming, okay? So that is the big message of today. Um, a couple other things that I just wanna say about annuals in general before we go into warm season. A lot of folks feel like annuals, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> are more work than perennials or a different work than perennials. Um, an annual is a plant that lives for one year. You plant it every year, year after year for that season. A perennial is a plant you plant, and if it's hardy in your area, um, it comes back year after year. The problem that I have with perennials, for those of us that live in areas that have long growing seasons, like for instance, you know, we're like April till October is our growing season, people call it. That's really long. And when you have a long growing season, you also have a long growing season of, you know what, weeds, right? So it is a huge labor of work to keep permanent plantings free from weeds versus annuals, we um, tend to be able to just pull them out and replant and stay better on top of the weeds. So for me and for those of us with long growing seasons, um, sometimes annuals work best. And frankly, you get more blooms. As I just shared with you, they will bloom continuous through the entire season if you keep on cutting them. Um, and I also want to say that the annuals that I've chosen to highlight in this book, which are some of my favorites, may, see, may seem kind of simple to some folks, um, but each one typically has many varieties and colors to choose from. So it keeps a lot of mystery and a lot of newness from week to week. So and the, what led me down that pathway is I'm what's known as a production flower farmer. I grow flowers for people in the commercial trade. I want to 
grow and sell the flowers that my customers use week after week after week. And that's because they last long, they are beautiful. Um, and so it's some of those, what some people might think is simple, but they are the meat and potatoes of our cutting garden. Um, so don't let that really um, trick you into thinking that there's fancier things to grow. Because I've gone down that rabbit hole before and certainly there are gorgeous things to grow. But um, for a long steady supply of flowers, simply, easy, which is what I'm all about, these are the ones you want to go with. The other thing, you really need to figure out the whole when do you plant warm season and cool season annuals? Because figuring that out will take you to have a whole new season of flowers. Uh, many of you I know have read my book, Cool Flowers, and actually done the book study that's online just like this one we're doing. And I hear from you all the time that you now have flowers so much earlier in the season in your garden, which of course is great for beneficials. So it's worth taking the time to figure that out. So let's talk about some warm season seeds. Um, so what's the earmark of when you start planting um, warm season stuff? We're right on the cusp of that right now in this season that we're in, and I'm getting the questions all the time. And this is the simplest way to know when it's time. When nighttime temperatures are staying over 60 degrees is when it's time to plant. You cannot judge when it's warm enough by the two o'clock in the afternoon temperatures, which will be up in the 70s today, but we go down into the low 50s tonight. So you're really not doing your plants um, any favors. However, I will add here, there are heroic measures that you can take to plant warm season stuff early, and we do do this. As you'll have probably may have already read later in the book, we use that biodegradable black film. We make our beds weeks and weeks before it's time to plant. And that black film on that raised bed helps to warm up that soil more than just a flat garden. On top of that, we then hoop and cover. So we create this beautiful little environment in there and we sneak a few, not all of our annuals, but we do sneak a few of them in um, like we're planting today and it's going to be 54 tonight. Um, so there are ways to plant early, but you got to take steps. You can't just do it. The other thing I really want to hit home is that succession planting. We succession plant, that means planting more smaller groups of flowers instead of planting everything at one time. There is no better group of plants to do that with than warm season annuals because that season is probably the longest that any of us have. So we plant a small selection of warm season, or actually we plant a wide variety, just smaller quantities of flowers because guess what? As soon as we're done planting, we're seed starting again for the next planting of many of the very same things. So you have to really wrap your head around that, and that is so true in vegetables. We plant tomatoes twice. I know that my good friend that's an organic vegetable farmer, they plant tomatoes two or three times. So they plant their first planting, and as soon as they're in the ground, they're seed starting for the next time. For me here in Zone 7 in southeastern Virginia, our cutoff date, we have to have the last planting of tomatoes in the ground by mid-July. That gives them opportune time to um, grow, set fruit, and have a harvest. That's how you have great tomatoes in September, y'all. It's not those plants you planted early in the season that may fall victim to disease or the deer or who knows what. So succession planting, and this is true for peppers, we continue to plant squash monthly up until late August for us because that's a quick crop, right? So succession planting um, for the warm season is not just for flowers, it's for vegetables too. I featured the flowers that I did in this warm season chapter because I wanted to give you a variety of flower shapes. You know, the zinnias are the nice wide flat flowers. You have some plume celosias, plume millets, um, the little gumphrina, which I will tell you, gumphrina is not my favorite thing to harvest. On a massive scale like we do here on the farm, 
It's enough to make you crazy. But in a home garden, it's a perfect little flower. There's no other little flower that's a round ball. What that little round ball can do to a bouquet um, is absolutely amazing. So I've tried to give you a spectrum and then you can dig deeper. Coxcomb and Celosia plumes. There are so many varieties and colors to choose from. And I recommend in a home garden that you plant mixes. The, when I say mixes, I mean a mix of colors, a mix of coxcomb, a mix of plumes. That way you can have different variety each week. And it just really keeps things fresh and new. Um, and the secret to keeping this little garden really pumping out the flowers is you must harvest it, as I just read to you. I do want to show you a little sample of what I'm reaping the beauty of right now. Um, we are still harvesting tons of poppies from the smallest patch you would not believe. Every time I cut this little patch, because we don't sell these commercially, these are for our own personal use really early in the season. It's before we've started delivering. Every time I cut the patch, I think to myself, well, that's it. The patch looks like it's not going to have any more, and then the next day I go out and there's more popping open. Um, so these are the Iceland poppies, which are featured in Chapter 5. Um, so if I was not cutting those every single time I see an open one, they would stop producing. You must cut, cut, I call it cutting hard. Hard means cutting often and cutting deep into the plant. For instance, these poppies, I mean, look at, I don't know how, if you can see the length of this stem. This was ground level right here. I cut that right into the ground level, and that means the next sprout will come where I cut. So cutting deep, meaning far down on the plant, and the book tells you where to make the cut on each specific plant, because it does vary. Um, so I'm just reading my notes to myself, and you know what I wrote here. Harvest hard, deep and often. They love nothing. The plants love nothing better than that. Well, maybe they love a bubble bath. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice, y'all. They maybe love a bubble bath of fish and sweet seaweed um, almost as well. So we do mix up our fish and seaweed fertilizer according to directions, and then foliar feed um, our plants before they're setting buds because it is kind of stinky so you certainly do not want to be cutting plants and bringing them in that you've done that with. So just a couple of other little notes. Um, <clears throat> I'll just say all zinnias get mildew. The Benares Giants are the most mildew resistant and that's why we grow them. And um, the steps that I take to help prevent them is we do not fertilize. And I know I say this in the book, we stop fertilizing them at a certain time because fertilizer, um, the sugars in that tend to fuel that fire. And um, cutting them hard and cutting them often keeps the airflow going. And so zinnias all get mildew. You will not prevent it. Um, and we don't treat for it. We just try to give it the best conditions. And if it gets out of control, we mow down or pull out that crop um, because we have a, another succession planting, right? That's the whole point of succession planting when you run into a problem. And I also want to give a big shout out to Azuratum, the Blue Horizon Azuratum. The photo just does not do it justice. Let me just tell you what a blue flower does to any bouquet. And that's really the only blue flower that I'm aware of that you can produce all summer long. Butterflies particularly love azuratum, by the way. But those blue flowers, and if they get smaller on you, which sometimes can happen, we just group two or three stems together when we put it in a bouquet. That blue makes everything pop. Um, so, you know, I've listed in the book many of my... Um, favorite celosias, and there are so many to choose from. I'm just looking. Um, this armload of celosia coxcomb mix is just endless. So, you know, that's another great gift of annuals. Guess what? Because you have open space available for the next succession planting or your garden next year, unlike when you plant perennials, you can try new varieties. You could, this year we've, I've been farming now for 20 years. 
we still have new varieties each year that we're trying a new one this year that I'm so excited to see. How's it going to perform? Are those colors really different than the ones that we already grow? So annuals are my true love. They are really easy. They are really quick. They're inexpensive to start because you start from seed. And seed starting is a piece of cake, y'all. We'll talk about that in another chapter. So, hey, till we meet again, I will see you right back here with Vegetables Love Flowers, um, Chapter 5, where we're going to talk about those cool season annuals that everybody can grow. If you're in Zone 3 in Canada, you can grow cool flowers. You may not plant them in the fall, but you can certainly plant those cool annuals much earlier than these warm season annuals we talked about today. So cool flowers really applies to everybody, and I look forward to talking to you about it next time. Ciao!